It says Jedi's for Jesus and I'm gonna go ahead and read some things. I'm gonna go ahead and say a few things and I'm also gonna show a video. Everyone's in on the Great Reset. Well, almost everyone. There's one guy who's got the power to do something to stop it and you know exactly where I'm going. So, stay tuned. video that I am gonna show you I agree 100% with this man there are so many things out there that I see and it's just too many smart people out there way smarter than me that don't understand what is happening I am so blessed to have my eyes wide open and not blinded to all the deception that is out there thank you Lord for taking the blinders off my eyes I said this in some other videos that the flesh is so selfish we have to fight it every day it's a spiritual battle whether you're on your iPhone or on your computer down below go ahead and leave a comment it really helps out our YouTube channel subscribe give a thumbs up and hit the bell thank you the second coming of Christ will be coming soon when there is peace in the Middle East. So we need to be ready. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled before our eyes. Whether you like President Trump or not, this isn't about him, nor do I care to hear it. It has already fulfilled one of the last prophecies in the Bible prior to Jesus returning. Moving the U.S. Embassy in Israel back to Jerusalem and recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel is one of the prophecies that must be fulfilled. No other president in history has done this but Donald Trump. We haven't seen anything yet. What the world is experiencing right now is just the tip of the iceberg. Just in case anyone wonders where I stand, the seven year tribulation will be worse by far than anyone could imagine. If you think this is our last pandemic or natural disaster, you are sadly mistaken. Read the book of Revelation as I, being a Christian, I've heard about the corruption and evil of the end times most of my life. It appears the book of Revelation is unfolding right before our eyes. And they made a mistake. They tried to get Trump on their side. So they invited Donald Trump to Davos, I think a couple of times. But in January, when Donald Trump, I think, really began to see the beast that he was up against, he went to Davos, yeah, to the World Economic Forum, and he stuck a mega finger in their eye. We shouldn't be shocked either, given the state of immorality in our world every day the boundaries of sin seem to be pushed further and further away the line between right and wrong has slowly been erased by society television media and pop culture witchcraft new age and new age beliefs are being celebrated and exalted even among professing to be Christians. We have been removed further from the world God created and intended. We need to take this time to reevaluate ourselves. We need to prepare and repent. Jesus will return just as his word tells us. We're committed to conserving the majesty of God's creation and the natural beauty of our world. But to embrace the possibilities of tomorrow, we must reject the perennial prophets of doom and their predictions of the apocalypse. These alarmists always demand the same thing, absolute power to dominate, transform, and control every aspect of our lives. We will never let radical socialists destroy our economy, wreck our country. Two days after Donald Trump gave that speech, the 89-year-old leftist weirdo billionaire George Soros made an emergency intervention where, at Davos once again, warning that the U.S. 2020 election will determine the, quote, fate of the whole world, 
There are many scriptures in the Bible that tell this, and I will read you three verses from the Bible. Matthew 24, 3 through 8, NIV version. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will the sign of the coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear war and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Luke 17, 34 through 35, NIV version. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Matthew 24, 40 through 41, NIV version. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house been broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is huge. This is a huge wake-up call and I am taking it seriously. I want to go home to my father when my time is up. Until the Lord calls me away from this world to the next, I want to make it clear that I believe in Jesus Christ as the true Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, was sacrificed on the cross, died for our sins, and rose again. He loves us all dearly, far more than we deserve, and forgives our sins if we repent. Let me say that again. We must repent. His word says, whoever believes in me will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is in one of the most famous verses in the Bible, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Please, get to know Jesus. Your eternal life depends on it. Evil is out there, and it is real. So, here's that video. Now, in the context of Davos, take a look at this one more time. This is a month after Donald Trump addressed Davos and stuck the MAGA finger in their face. Here's what Francis, the Vatican, and Jeffrey Sachs had to say in response. And it is a dangerous country right now. It will be absolutely dangerous if Trump wins re-election. Trump wins re-election. Trump wins re-election. Francis invited this guy to the, to the Amazon Senate as an honored guest and advisor. He's also Bernie Sanders' advisor. What's he doing in the Vatican? Why is this guy who is a promoter for socialist, out and out socialist, Bernie Sanders, what's he doing advising the Pope? Why does he have entree to the Vatican, friends? Sachs supports abortion and contraception, but that's not a problem for the Vatican. For the Vatican, for Pope Francis, and for his friends at the UN, Donald Trump is the problem, obviously, friends. 1 Peter 2, 11 through 17, NIV. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to the governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the 
ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. But that's not a problem for the Vatican. For the Vatican, for Pope Francis, and for his friends at the UN, Donald Trump is the problem, obviously, friends. Clearly, I consider the Trump administration a danger to the world, but I regard it as a purely temporary phenomenon that will disappear in 2020. Do you get it? Do you see why there's so much hate for Trump? Because with all of his faults, again, he's the capitalist. He's not the globalist. He never will be one of them. Which is why he pulled the United States out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Donald Trump pulled the United States out of the World Health Organization. That's Bill Gates and company. And now he's threatening to pull the United States out of the World Trade Organization. People say, yeah, well, Donald Trump got married twice. He's a bad guy. Really? <laughs> He's right in the face of the demons on this, friends. Nobody ever said he was a saint. He's knocking the sacred cows of the United Nations down all over the world right now. The General Assembly routinely votes 185 against the United States on almost everything right now. And you remember, speaking of the United Nations, in November of 2019, again, right before COVID landed, Trump went to the UN on the floor of the General Assembly and he declared war on globalism. Wise leaders always put the good of their own people and their own country first. The future does not belong to globalists. The future belongs to patriots. And shortly after the speech at the UN, Donald Trump delivered, what do you think happened? The coronavirus was unleashed on the world and Trump's booming U.S. economy went on life support. Do you think that was an accident? So when they tell you, when they tell all of us to stay home, wear your mask so grandma doesn't get sick, please understand what's really going on here. They don't care about your grandmother. They don't care about old people, these people. They don't care about babies. They want them aborted so that they can save the common home. Abort babies, millions of them all over the world. They don't care about babies. They don't care about old people. In fact, if you want to save your grandma, tell the globalists to stay the hell away from her. You remember how some of them, like Cuomo and characters like this, were running COVID recovering patients through nursing homes? That's how much they care about grandma. And the name of the game now is to bring the United States economy to its knees. Get it out of the way so that everyone will want the Great Reset. Make the new normal so intolerably abnormal that even you and I, maybe, you know, at some point in the near future, we'll be begging for the vaccines because we'll be driven crazy by that point. Begging for whatever else is going to keep us safe, according to our jailers and our handlers and our zookeepers. You see, that's what they want. That's why they keep using this term new normal. You know what we do to fight back? Go to work. Go back to school. If you're healthy, take off the mask. And for heaven's sake, go back to church and pray that Trump wins in November. That's what the reset was. All. That's what the Russia hoax was all about. The uh, impeachment hoax was all about. Don't you see? For four years, I've been trying to stop this man because if he strengthens America, if he makes it great again, if he brings the economy back again, the reset won't happen. The new world order is going to be set way back. Who knows when they're going to have another COVID opportunity like this one again. And they know it. So ask yourselves why they hate this man. These folks, these men, they hate God. They hate the unborn. They hate the traditional family. They hate you. And they hate Donald Trump. Whose political opponents, by the way, right now are knocking statues of saints to the ground. They're beating up cops. And they're burning flags. <laughs> you, say, you say you don't like Trump. I'm sorry, friends, but who cares? That doesn't really matter anymore. But you think of Trump's personality or his tweets. Look at the big picture. The choice is simple, friends. Stand with America right now. Or fall with the new world order in the not-so-distant future. There's no other choice. This is Jedi's for Jesus. Hope to see you in heaven 
one day soon.